What's up guys? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Ardell. In today's video, we got a good option for you Scandinavian defense players with the Gabinski Melts defense. It's definitely an off-key spin of the Scandi that will be sure to create some inequalities and fun middle game positions that you can work with. And on top of that, I find this variation to be one of the most underrated options for black in the game of chess. And it's actually very hard to go against when played correctly. Shout out to my guy Mateus for recommending that I make it. And as mentioned, we're starting off with the Scandi, putting some pressure on that centralized pawn. And here, if a move like e takes d5, we're going to continue as normal by evening out the material by capturing off that pawn. But now I guess the move knight c3, we're not going to go with the main line of queen a5 or even bring this queen all the way back to d8, which used to be the most popular option back in the day. But we're now going to play this move of queen d6, just bringing this queen back a single square. And let's face it, this queen d6 move does look a little bit odd. Doesn't this just go against chess opening strategy and allow white to attack this queen and gain development in the process. Well, notice there's really only two pieces here that are going to be able to attack this queen in the near future. One of them is this bishop on c1, which could come to f4, but notice this queen is attacking that square, so white's going to have a supporting piece or pawn in order to make this move happen. And even then, as we're going to see, black can simply play a move like queen e6 or queen d7 based on the situation, and we're going to be completely fine. Another way that white can try to attack this queen is by using this knight on c3, playing a move like knight e4 or knight b5. Our next two moves is black are going to be knight f6 and a6, trying to prevent this while developing our pieces and making sure that this queen ain't going anywhere for quite a long time. Notice if white tries to do it right now with a move like knight b5, I'm actually okay, which is bringing this queen back to d8 because we can gain a tempo on that knight with a6. And here, if we see a move like knight e4, we have a lot of options there. One of them is this move of queen g6, attacking that minor piece, and we have achieved near equality if we play that right. What about this move of d4? This is the move that you're going to see most of the time. White going, okay, I mean, there's the center. Why not take it? But as you guys are going to see, sure, this pawn is taking up some space on c5 as well as e5, but this pawn is actually going to become the primary target going forward. White's going to have a very awkward game much of the time. We're going to start off with knight f6, fighting for the centralized score, specifically the square on e4. And here, if we move like knight f3, we play a6 with the Bronstein variation. There's a lot of different moves that black can go with there, but I like the move of a6, really preventing knight b5 and bishop b5 options in the future. And on top of that, by playing this move of a6, we are keeping the c6 square open for our knight on b8, which is going to be key if we're really trying to go after that centralized pawn on d4. Now white has a decision to make, and that's what to do with their light squared bishop on f1. Does white just want to play a normal looking move like bishop e2 or bishop d3, or do they want to try to fee and shadow the bishop with g3? Let's first take a look at a move like g3 here. In this case, let's waste no time in pinning this knight to the queen on d1. And here, if we see a move like bishop g2, play knight c6. Notice that the pressure is mounting against this isolated pawn, not to mention that this knight is currently pinned to the queen on d1, both of these pieces being the two key defenders. And notice, if white plays a move here like bishop f4, attacking our queen, we can actually just slide this queen over one step to the left now with queen e6. Gabinski Melts players gotta be comfortable in a position like this with a queen that usually isn't on a square like e6. We are attacking this king on e1. Notice if a move like queen e2, okay, we're just gonna trade off and we've reached equality. And here, if this bishop comes back to e3, we can now castle queenside. This is a key idea in the Gabinski melds. We're trying to bring our knight to c6, develop our light squared bishop to either g4 or f5, and then castle queen side with this rook now pouncing down on that isolated pawn. And white here can get a very awkward game very quickly if they're not careful. There was a master level game that continued with white castling king side, and we now see black play this move of queen f5, just continuing to mount the pressure on this knight on f3. Again, a key supporting piece of d4 and right now black actually has e5 ideas in the air that would attack both d4 and also threaten ideas like e4 attacking this pin piece so guys white is in major trouble the best move here is surprisingly this option of h3 simply giving up a pawn and that's actually what we saw in the game so that black can't play ideas like e5 and just keep throwing more and more and more pressure on that center but in this case okay we can take on f3 and whole idea being if a move like queen takes f3 we can simply trade off and then capture that centralized pawn and here if a move like bishop takes f3 which is what was played we can take that pawn on h3 and black went on to win this in nice fashion so in a position like this we reach the bronstein variation covering squares like b5 as well as e4 if you see a move like g3 waste no time in trying to pin that minor piece 
to the queen on d1, continuing with very simple ideas like knight c6 and castle and queenside, and you're going to be in business. What happens here if white just plays a more normal looking move, not fian shadowing the bishop with bishop e2? Well, in this case, I actually like playing knight c6 and attacking the pawn on d4. Notice, by the way, if white tries to attack our knight with something like d5, they are, yet again, gaining space, but this pawn is becoming more and more of a target. We're now going to continue with knight b4. We don't have two pieces, but now three, all attacking that centralized pawn. And if white wants to try to hang on to it, they got to play bishop c4, but now we have the key option of bishop f5, I knight takes c2 ideas, checking both the king and the rook on e1. And here, if white stops it with a move like bishop b3, we can now castle queenside. We got four pieces all locking down on that centralized pawn, and there's just no way that white can hang on to it. See how the Gubinski melts is very interesting. I mean, we really are just kind of throwing our queen out into the action and then quickly developing both of our knights, kind of hoping that white will play a move like d5 because it's only going to make that centralized pawn more of a target. But what happens here if white goes, look, I don't want the smoke. I don't want the smoke. I don't want to play d5 and create even more weaknesses. I'm just going to castle kingside and try to get a somewhat normal looking game. Well, in this case, I don't really like the move of bishop g4 as much because it's not pinning this knight to the queen on d1. By the way, there's absolutely nothing wrong with bishop g4, but I personally kind of like this idea of bishop f5, putting a little bit of pressure on c2 and just getting an active minor piece. Here, if we see something like bishop e3, white continuing to try to hang on to that pawn on d4. Here's black. We can just continue with a very natural chess, castling queenside, which is really the main idea, the key idea of the Gabinsky melts defense. But if you don't like to castle queenside in a position like this, it's actually completely okay. We can now continue with e6, play a move like bishop e7, and start eyeing castling kingside ideas. By the way, if we see a move like bishop f4, we could play something like queen b4 and try to get after these pawns a little bit. But I personally would just rather play a move like queen d7, castle the king, and we're just playing chess with a nice game for black. See, I'll go on back to this move of a6 with the Bronstein variation of the Gabinski melts. We just covered two options, one of them being g3 and the other being bishop e2. My general rule of thumb is that if you see this move g3, pin the knight to the queen on d1. And if you see bishop e2, simply drop this bishop on f5 and continue playing chess. However, what happens here if white plays an aggressive option, a more attacking move with knight e5, immediately trying to take control of the center of the board, and now eyeing bishop f4 ideas, which would indirectly put some pressure on our queen on d6. Does this move of knight e5 refute the Gabinski melts defense? I actually don't think that this is a very good move at all if we play it right. We got to play an active move here, such as knight c6, immediately putting pressure on e5, as well as d4. And there's really two main moves here that we've seen at the top levels. One of them is white just capturing off this knight on c6, and the other being bishop f4. Let's first take a look at the move of knight takes c6. In this case, we'll simply capture back with the queen. We do not want to mess up our pawn structure. And now as black, we have very simple chess with ideas like e6 and bishop d6, and we're going to be in business. And here, if white again tries to push with d5, okay, let's just slide our queen over to the left one square. Even if white plays queen f3 trying to play bishop f4 ideas, we're going to activate our light squared bishop and attack the queen. And yet again, black with a very nice and playable game. See, so if white wants to capture on c6, it really does make our game easy. Capture back with the queen, and if you don't see that move d5, just continue with e6 and continue developing your pieces. You're going to be more than fine. But what about this move of bishop f4? This option may seem a lot more threatening than the very simple knight takes c6 and queen captures back. But guys, if we play this correctly, we're going to be more than okay. And in fact, there's quite a few different moves here that give black a quality and maybe even a little bit more. The most popular option at the master and grandmaster level is just to kind of ignore that the bishop is aimed at our queen and simply capture off this pawn with knight takes d4. Recognize that after knight g6, our queen and our rook on h8 are both being attacked, but we can now play this Gabinski melts type move with queen e6 check attacking the king. Whole idea being if you want to play something like bishop e3 or bishop e2, we can simply continue with knight takes c2 check again and then simply capturing off this knight on g6. And here white really needs to play the move of knight e5 if they want to have an equal position. Now black needs to be careful because white is currently threatening 
to capture this knight on d4. And if we play a move like c5, bishop c4 is played, and we just lost ourselves the game very quickly. So we got to play this move back to d6. White could here play this move of knight g6, knight e5, and just go in circles and circles and get a threefold repetition. White could also try this move of knight takes f7, which does appear to win material, and it actually does, but we're more than okay with this. It's only going to be temporary because we capture off this bishop, and yes, we are down the exchange, but y'all, if we play this right, there's no way that this knight is going to get out, and later on, we're simply going to win ourselves a full piece. We're starting off with a very aggressive e5, pushing in the center of the board, defending this knight on d4. And here, if we see a move like bishop c4 trying to get this knight out, we can simply continue with knight takes c2 check and saying thank you for the bishop. And notice now, we got very easy chess with bishop e6, a key idea, defending the square of f7, followed by bishop d6, castling queenside, and there's no way with both of our bishops on the 6th rank and this pawn on h7 that this knight is going to come out. We are currently down a little bit material, but we're going to be much ahead once this knight falls off. See how going back to this key position, in which case we captured off that centralized pawn against bishop f4, white could try to play a move like knight g6, but then we play queen e6, and the best thing white has there is to simply get the same position we have currently, and if knight takes f7 is played, white does go up the exchange, but only temporarily because we capture off this bishop, we're then going to continue with e5, bishop e6, bishop d6, castling queenside, plug that into computer, it's going to tell you that that knight simply has no way to get out. What happens here if white tries something like bishop c4, just trying to mount the pressure on our pawn on f7? Well, here we're not going to play a move like e6, this isn't a disastrous mistake, but much better is bishop e6, simply fighting for this diagonal and really just blocking this bishop from attacking f7 at all. And again, if white here tries anything, for example, knight takes f7, this seems disastrous for black, but now we simply capture off this bishop. If white wants to take on h8, we're going to capture on c4 and have two minor pieces for the rook and the knight's going to be trapped. So here white might as well get something over this bishop, a capture on e6 first, and then capture the rook on h8. In this case, we are down two points of material, but we can now continue with rook d8 attacking the queen. And here if we see something like queen f3, there's actually a master level game that continued with queen d2 check, forcing this king over one square to his right, king f1, in which case we now have knight d4 attacking the queen, and white here, guys, is just in a bunch of trouble. This knight is not going to get out, and here, if white played a move like queen takes b7, we now have knight g4 ideas threatening a mate and one, and here, if white tries to play something like knight e4, okay, we just capture off the pawn on c2. We now have a ton of pressure on the white camp, and this position is simply crushing for black. So y'all, to conclude this video, as we saw, I mean, white tries to play something like d4, expanding in the center of this pawn. If we play that right, with knight f6, and then going into the Bronstein variation of a6, eyeing f5 and g4 options for our bishop, continuing with knight c6 and castling queenside, this pawn on d4 is simply going to become a big, big target. What happens if white knows this and tries not to play the move of d4, but instead here just plays options like knight f3? Well, in that case, okay, we as black are going to develop as usual knight f6. Here, play a move like a6. If white refuses to bring their pawn to d4, we as black really just have a simple game. We can always go with normal Gabinski melt type fashion with knight c6, or here we even have this option of b5, right? Kicking this bishop around. If we see a move like bishop b3, we play bishop b7, taking control. There's a very nice long diagonal pouncing down on that knight. And here, if white plays something like d3, really trying to not make this pawn a weakness, well, the pawn's not a weakness, but we as black just have a very easy game here with near equality following e6. We're now just going to continue with ideas like knight d7, bishop e7 from there. It's really up to you if you want to play something like knight c5 and try to trade off this knight. If you want to play a move like c5, expanding on the queen side, you're going to continue to develop your pieces, and we're just playing chess. Thanks for watching, and thank you especially to all of you engaging on Patreon. Your donations are helping the Chess Giant team to continue developing more and better chess content. If you want to learn more about the extras you can unlock by subscribing at one of our Patreon tiers, hit up the link in the description if interested. If you'd like to see some of the gambits that I've covered, click that playlist to the left for our chess gambits. And if you want to learn more about the hippopotamus defense, click that playlist to the right. Leave a comment down below to let me know what other videos you'd like to see covered on this channel. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.